<coughs> it's time to build a new desk. This this is the setup I have behind the camera whenever I'm making a video with you guys. Um, it doesn't work. It hasn't been the best. Uh, until recently I had a, a set of drawers wedged in here, so all I really had was this very narrow area to put my legs. Um, screens across the board, so my microphone arm is always getting in the way of uh, being able to see the screen. I'm constantly having to move it and you hear it coming across on uh, on the audio when I move it. And this, this doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to be uh, doing some stuff here to make this desk a little bit better, make this a little bit more accessible and to have some room. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. I've just got a ring light. I should turn that on. Yeah, now I'm a, now I'm a professional YouTuber. So to get things started, I've drawn up a rough plan for what I want for my desk. I want to be able to accommodate three screens, have a microphone boom off to the side that won't be obstructing one of the streams from my field of vision, and I want at least one of these screens to be mounted with a rotational screen mount so that I can go from landscape to portrait because I like to switch things up when I'm working from home. I then went and bought all of my timber from a local timber store. This is H3 treated timber, so it's stuff used for like retaining walls and stuff like that. It will never rot while it's in here. And then I bought some fence rails to help build the legs. I put that all in storage so that it can dry out so that when the time comes to build the desk I can rip it down with a, a thicknesser. The plan itself is quite rough at the moment. It's a, a rough size of about 1.8 to 2 meters long, 60 centimeters deep, which won't change too much. Uh, but when it comes to the legs and everything like that I don't really have a strong plan around how I'm going to make it. A wise man once said, it's a bad plan that cannot be changed. I don't know who said that. I know that it was a loading screen of Rome Total War and I read it all the time and I, I like to think it's true so I'm not going to be setting anything in stone at this point. I, I want to be quite loose with my approach to this. Um, the one thing I did think about last night is bracing because I'm planning to make square legs uh, and there's nothing to stop it from just moving forward. I will have a brace across the back that I've planned but I haven't thought of how that I'll stop it from flexing forward or back. So for now we're waiting for timber to dry, um, we're waiting for me to have enough money to be able to afford everything else uh, and yeah we're in this cool flux stage where I get to make plans and just kind of brood on them and let them percolate while I, uh, while I wait for some money to come in and some motivation to actually get shit done. Above and beyond the desk I want to add something in here that will give it a bit of RGB flair, uh, make this like a real battle station. So um, for these screens that I have here, I'll show you the back, but uh, the stud wall is only 45 centim 45 mil by 45 mil. It's not a proper stud wall. They're spaced weirdly apart, so the screens have to be maneuvered weirdly, and that's just not very comfortable. So what I will do is put a board at the back that will space the, um, the wall-mounted monitors equally apart so that I can move them better, uh, and then I'll put a little recess behind it that I can put some RGB lights. Above that I'll place some of this piping which I used to use for my, my camera mount um, when I used to have only one screen here. I'll mount that to the wall so I can pop my ring light, camera, uh, webcam and whatever other peripherals I, I end up getting on it. So I might go with a slightly longer rod than this inanimate carbon rod I've got here. Hey what is that? It's an inanimate carbon rod! Uh, and that'll be mounted up there just a little bit above the eye line so that it's nice to look at because I can't fit my tripod behind my monitors. That's the plan so far. I think it's really important to point out that I wanted to build a custom desk specifically for the space I had rather than purchasing one of these pre-built ones. I just think that I wanted something unique and something that nobody else has. Once I had a rough plan in place it was time to start collecting the components that I'd need to complete the desk. The first thing I tracked down was a maneuverable monitor arm for my third screen that could be mounted onto the desk and go from landscape to portrait mode, depending on what I was using it for. I found this Loctec model that has a mic, audio and USB port on the base, and it could also be mounted with a grommet, which is perfect for me because I don't want it to be sitting at the back of the desk, I want it moved a little bit closer to me. This will be for my main monitor when I'm working from home and it will connect to a Surface Pro dock. After mounting it, I quickly realized that having it on the left hand side was not going to work at all. The elbow of the arm was going to smash into the plaster wall every time I maneuvered it, so I made the decision to swap it to the right hand side. 
I also decided that using a desk that was propped up on two bits of 4x4 timber um, while balancing a monitor arm on it was probably not the safest thing to do so I took the whole desk out and I swapped it out for this dining room table that I had in storage. It's the right length for me, uh, it's almost exactly two meters long which is kind of what I'm looking for for the desk, however it's a bit on the short side and a little bit on the wide side so I'm really sitting a lot further away from my monitors now and a lot further down. But at least in the meantime it's functional and it gives me an idea for what the finished desk will be like. So I can get the look and feel for what it will be like to have three screens aligned and how the monitor arm will interact with the other two screens. Let's take some time to talk about the RGB panel that I made. First of all I put together some galvanized piping that I purchased from a hardware store. This is to play the part of my camera and lighting rig which will be set about 15 centimeters away from the wall. Next up I got an RGB light strip which was kind of middle of the market from a local online game store. I don't know if that phrase <laughs> makes sense. These work via Wi-Fi, they have a little Wi-Fi adapter they plug into the main power and they, they work pretty well from what I can tell. Next I got some MDF board. I measured it out so that my monitors could sit evenly on this and then even have a little bit of extra space either side. I did plan this really well, I just can't remember what the exact measurements were while I'm <laughs> recording this narration. Next up I glued these battens to the back. These will um, set this entire board about one and a half centimeters away from the wall and it will act as a spacer that the RGB light strip can go against. There's a little recess that I cut here so that I can put the wiring for the RGB lighting in the back of this and have it all nicely tucked away. Then I use this router piece just to round off the edge of this MDF board. I did need to also spray paint this so that it was a nice matte finish and, and black and, and clean looking. And then a quick coat of paint for the lighting board as well and you can see here that there are some pre-drilled holes both for my monitor arms and to mount it into the stud in my wall. This is how meticulously I planned this, still putting down the LED strip that started at the bottom and Look at that, ends right there, <laughs> perfect. And then I did a quick test to make sure that the lighting would be sufficient against the wall behind it and it looks pretty good. Now it's time to mount it. So here it is all mounted up, I still need to patch those holes where you can see the bolts, one of them didn't quite fit the stud snugly so I had to play around with it a bit, it looked a little bit ugly so I'll patch those up. Uh, but here you can see how the monitors work perfectly together with this board. So I got the planer yesterday and I've stripped down all of the wood. Um, it was still a little bit too wet so it actually ended up ripping a lot. If you can see that <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's not the best. I'm going to have to do a lot of sanding to get that down. But I've got the desk basically the, all cut to size. Um, I've managed to make the legs which um, are slightly off size. So one size shorter because it's sitting on that shelf behind me and the one up in front is longer because it has to reach all the way down to the floor. I don't know why I need to explain that. Um, I've also put some bracing in so that it doesn't wobble. So I figured out the bracing, I just cut some bits of leftover timber and slotted them in the top and the bottom there. Uh, and so that should stop it from wobbling back and forward. And then you can see this cross beam at the back which I'll just trim a little uh, lap join, I think that's what they're called. Um, so that I can bolt it in at either end and that way I can unbolt it or rebolt it and take it in and out if I need to um, because that is the only entrance into this room and I can't move a fully assembled desk in and out because it's about a 50 centimeter opening. So yeah that's how furniture goes in this room and it's echoey because I've um, stripped down everything and I'm, I'm sanding, replastering and sanding and painting in here. Uh, just to refresh the room at the same time. Now we get to the gluing of the main tabletop which I really regret how this all went down. I had planned originally to use some biscuit joiners to join it all together but when it came to the day my drill and router piece that were working so well previously in this video actually died so I ended up just gluing this with PVA glue and clamping it together and hoping for the best. Unfortunately as what can be expected there was a little bit of warping because there was no dowel or anything keeping this straight so the whole tabletop ended up warping a little bit and, and getting a little bit of a curve to it. I did try to remedy this a little bit later just by coming back with some strips of wood that I'd screwed to the bottom and these would also act as a guide for the legs to rest against. Let's move on to something a little bit more fun. I have these headphone hooks that I need to mount underneath the overhang of the desk on one of the legs. They're a little Z-shaped piece of metal with a little rubber fixture thing that you can just hang them like this. 
if I could get them into frame and I just want to sit them here like this so that my headphones can sit and be easily grabbed if I need them but what I wanted to make sure was that the top of this leg would sit flush against the desk so what I did was rule some lines make some slight cuts and chisel out the piece so that it could sit flush with the top of the desk and here you can see the little recess for those two headphone hooks and the whole desk uh, how it will be set up from an upside down point of view. The way I planned on putting the legs together was to have these little adjustable feet sticking in the bottom so if I messed something up and it wasn't level or if the ground was also on level which I know for a fact it is I could easily adjust the legs with this little screw top incision and make sure that it would sit level. I just needed to find a hole that would be right for these to fit in so I used a couple of my drill pieces and found the right gauge and then all I needed to do was mark out how deep I needed that depth to be so that the screw wouldn't go into the timber in the leg so I just needed to mark this out on my drill and then I could drill the holes to the right depth. When it came to drilling the grommet holes in the top of the desk I actually messed this up pretty bad. What I did was I measured it backwards which means that my original plan for having two holes on the right hand side and one hole on the left hand side ended up with two holes on the left hand side and one hole on the right hand side so i rectified that by just making four holes all up and it actually worked out much better which you'll see later in this video with the legs i'd originally planned on painting them white to match the cable trays that i purchased which were powder coat white as well but through the design process I decided that they'd look a lot better glossy black so I did paint them with some black oil based paint and I decided to then go back and paint the uh, the wire trays with the same black paint as well which was tricky because I had to prime them and then I ended up using the oil coat on top to just give it some extra protection to stop it from general wear and tear. I thought something that would be quite cool was to add a bottle opener on the leg of the desk so that I could always open a bottle nice and easy and have one handy so I went and purchased this for about five bucks and attached it and then when it came to the desktop I had to meticulously sand it with several different grades of sandpaper and then I got some linseed based putty and added some of the white paint that I purchased for the legs into that to stain it white and put that into all the gaps in the top of the desk. Once it had cured I sanded it all back again and then I used a white varnish on it which stained the wood white. I had to use several coats but it did bring out some really nice colours of green uh, and then the wood grain itself and it looks really nice. So then we got to the point of cable management which I'm not even going to try and explain to you. Uh, but it did work out well at the end. It's been three months now and the desk is 100% completed. I've been using it effectively every day for both work and for play and I found that it works really well. I'm enjoying the fact that all of my cables are now securely kept out of the way and that I have enough room for a mug of beer or a game console or some paperwork or whatever it is that I'm working on at the time. I really love the wood grain finish on the top of the desk. It's come out really beautifully. There was a little bit of shrinkage and I had to refill some gaps with some more putty but otherwise it's worked out really well. My camera mount is a little bit high for my liking but for now it suits its purpose and I've found a convenient way to tuck game consoles away is to actually put them on top of my filing cabinet and here you can also see all of the wires are nice and tidy and the docks are all kept out of sight and out of mind. And finally my favourite little addition to the desk is this bottle cap opener that I spoke about before. I've placed the Elgato in this hole that I accidentally drilled additionally when I had everything mixed up when it was upside down and it's actually turned out to be really practical. I often need to access the card to unplug it and plug it back in just to get the uh, video feed read on OBS or if I'm wanting to use the splitter cable slash aux cable I can plug it in or pull it out as required and that would be very annoying to do that while everything was under the desk. I've also used this USB hub here so that I can just plug in cards or wireless adapters as needed and it's nice and tidy on the desk. All in all this has been a really successful project. Uh, it came in much cheaper than purchasing a brand new desk with the same look and feel and it's uniquely fitted to the space. I'm excited about the prospect of years to come where my kids can set up two of these screens with HDMI cables and, and play console games together or one could play on a console on one screen and the other could use my PC uh, to play Minecraft which is something they like to do um, but for now this is purely my area and uh, I've been enjoying it immensely.